homilist for this Mass is our pastor, Father Andrew Semler, assisting him as Deacon Robert Holiday. Our opening hymn can be found in your hymnals, Praise to the Lord, number 861, number 861. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So today in our gospel we hear Jesus call us to seek the treasure of the kingdom of heaven. As we strive to connect with our Lord, our Heavenly Father, and listen to his word and to receive the Holy Eucharist. We prepare our hearts to do so by recalling to mind our sins, asking the Lord for pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary of her virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Peace to people on earth. We praise you. We bless you. We adore.
Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O oh Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, a king to succeed my father, David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we know all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. <coughs> Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and he buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into, into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus, it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord.
In our first reading today from the book of Kings, we hear about the blessings of pursuing the spiritual gift of understanding and the gift to distinguish right from wrong. We can call these gifts ones of spiritual wisdom. It is not King Solomon recognized that it was not simply intelligence that makes a person wise, but we also need probably even more spiritual wisdom to live the fullest. Young King Solomon knew this wisdom came from God. He desired an understanding heart, and he realized that only God could provide that gift. That he might understand that God is present, not just in the good things, but even in the trials and crosses of life. He understood that as king over God's people, his primary task was to strengthen their relationship with God and to govern them according to God's plan. And of course, to do that, he needed the wisdom from God. Kings of other nations, they relied on power and riches. But Sol Solomon knew that the more important thing was this spiritual wisdom. His wish was for the good of the larger community, the community that God has had put him in charge of. This is a reminder that we should be mindful to pray and remember in our actions the good of the larger community. You know, we're not just thinking about ourselves, but we recognize that God calls us to be, to also be aware of and be concerned with those around us. Those may be in our charge. So this theme today of that beautiful gift of wisdom of knowing God, it brings us to our gospel. For this wisdom Solomon desires is shown in our gospel, manifesting itself as the wisdom of knowing the kingdom of heaven. And its value, it is to pursue this great treasure. The first two parables in the gospel, finding a treasure and finding a fine pearl. In those stories, it highlights a great joy that is present in obtaining those earthly treasures. Finding an earthly treasure or a fine pearl both try to express the incomparable value of knowing and living in the kingdom of heaven in our midst. So we know the kingdom of heaven is not only in the heavens, but the Lord says the kingdom of heaven is among us. So the kingdom of heaven can very well be part of our lives. How do we find this joy, this treasure of the kingdom of heaven? Jesus implies that we must make an effort to uncover it. The wisdom does not just happen. Effort is required, as it mentions in those parables, as being part, is required on the part of a disciple. And we know that anything in life that's truly worth it does take some effort. And we know that that includes spiritual things as well. Seek and you will find. That means we're making an effort. I'm seeking God's wisdom. I'm seeking that treasure of living now as part of that kingdom of heaven. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, seek and you will find. In the parable, we hear that when the, the person finds the treasure, he sells all he has and buys that field. And the person who finds a fine pearl goes and sells all he has and buys it. So both of these parables point out that to get this great treasure of the kingdom of heaven, they do need to surrender some earthly attachments. 
as part of their work that is required. They are sell all he has definitely shows a sacrifice is required to obtain this heavenly treasure. Are we seeking today? Are we seeking that treasure by our actions, by the proper decisions that we make to obtain this treasure and to live in the ways of the heavenly kingdom? Do we see seeking and being in relationship with Christ as the greatest treasure? And is Jesus our source for true wisdom? The rewards of finding this treasure of the kingdom of heaven are bountiful. Treasures such as love, forgiveness, peace, and eternal life. May we seek constantly this kingdom. It is a journey, not a month journey or a year journey, but truly it's a journey that happens every day. And it, after a life well lived, we do receive this treasure in its fullness. But during our lifetime, we must discover this treasure and we must strive to make it part of our lives. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begot not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In prayer, let us come to our Lord and present to, the, to him these our petitions. For our Pope Francis and all our bishops, that they will work tirelessly to bring all people to the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations afflicted by poverty, famine, and injustice, that they will be guided by the Holy Spirit to heal their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For guidance to fill our treasures with heavenly things and not worldly things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth who will be going away to college this month, that they will be led by the Holy Spirit in all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in crisis at the Texas border, that they may be treated with dignity, respect, and kindness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Katie May Powell, Richard Hader, Ed Cross, Maria Norton, John Patrick Eaton, Nicolosa Le Ledzema Gulian, Renee Telford, and Ed Sodom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for the living and deceased members of St. Jude in this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we are confident that you hear our prayers. And we ask you to receive those requests that we present to you this day as we lift them up to you. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us singing our offertory hymn. Number 104 in your white songbook. Number 104, we bow down. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and his assistant, Bishop Gregory, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. <laughs> Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Oops, peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Mom. 
Please join in singing number 530 in your hymnals at that first Eucharist, number 530. Join in singing number 17 in your white songbook. Number 17, Christ in Us.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the following announcements. Carnival time is quickly approaching. If your family would like to help sponsor, we have a special flag bearer sponsorship just for you. Also, the Carnival Raffle Committee is looking for donations. Last year, we raised over $35,000 to support local children. If you'd like to sponsor the Carnival or contribute to the raffle, you can see the website or page two of the bulletin. Men, the next welcome retreat is only three weeks away. It is a time, a time to get away from work calls or house chores. And uh, men are in the red shirts and they're at the exits to help answer any questions or to help you register for the weekend retreat. All high school and middle school students are invited to a time of praise and worship, adoration and fellowship this Wednesday at 7 p.m. The evening will start in the sanctuary, followed by fellowship in the parish hall. Think of becoming a Catholic or need to complete your sacraments. Team members from our RCIA, which means Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, will be at the Donut Fellowship after the 10 o'clock Mass on Sunday, August 13th. So in two weeks from now, and they'll be there so you can ask any question you have about the process, meet the team. So if you do need your adult sacraments or if you know someone who is interested in becoming Catholic, it is a good opportunity for you to touch base with them. Again, it's after the 10 o'clock mass on August 13th. Due to our lighting system being upgraded in our sanctuary, please note the noon mass tomorrow will be in the chapel. Earlier this week, we completed an update of our audio system which includes a new assisted listening system. This system involves a receiver and a headset you can use in the church, but it also allows the option to use an app on your phone. If you have any more questions, there is a handout, I think, in the back of the church. Also, yes, so that would be, and if you have any additional questions, we can talk to Jack Gunn. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing the first and last verses of our recessional hymn, number 815, 815. God's blessing sends us forth. Breathe. 